Luna is keeping me company, or rather, I'm keeping Luna company. I've been binge reading this book, The Comfort Crisis, that arrived today. It's funny that after my no content challenge, I'm reading a book that's saying how important boredom is. Hey, stop scratching. Instead of thinking, instead of thinking less phone time, it might be more productive to think more boredom. When you're bored, you go into an unfocused mode, the opposite of focused. Focused is when you're using your phone or engaging in any type of media, anything like that, content. And also the book says that walking in nature is actually very similar to the unfocused mode. Instead of just focusing inwardly, you're also outwardly lightly focusing on the na nature and surrounding around you. Brain scans show that walking in nature creates a mindfulness-like state. So it's mindfulness without the meditation. This helps restore and build the resources that we need to think, create, and process information. So they did a lot of studies on what's the ideal, most efficient amount of time that you should spend in nature to get your biggest bang for the minimum minimal amount of time. And the ideal time is 20 minutes, three times a week. That's the minimum amount of time. I say walking in nature, but it could just be any place where there are trees as you're walking or grass. Even if you're walking in city streets or suburban areas, if there are some trees or some bit of nature around you, then that counts. Also, they did a survey in Finland and people found that they felt the best with approximately five hours of outdoor time every month. They were more likely to avoid depression and be happier with their lives. There is a caveat to the benefits of walking in nature. If you're using your phone or you're listening to something with earbuds, especially if it's content like words, then there is zero benefit of walking in nature in terms of your mental state. Oh my gosh, Luna. <laughs> so when you go for a walk, don't take your earbuds, put your phone away, put it on do not disturb and focus on the nature surrounding you. <laughs> you slept, Luna. <laughs> Her tail is my scarf. I think that might be some of the best part of the book and I'm not sure what's upcoming, but I'll skim through and read to the end and see what I find. Anyways, I started implementing an advice that I heard from a new friend, Tika, a fellow YouTuber, and she said to write down what you want to get done that day. So of the four things I wrote down, I got in my workout, I read, I walked, I still have to stretch, so I think I'll get to that after I make this video. By the way, the video that I got this advice from, Tika, I'll link it in the description because it was a fantastic video. I thought if one really implements all the advice that she shares in that video, I believe it will be life-changing. And I'm trying to implement some of them. Also, this book is was one of her recommendations, so that's why I picked this book up. See you tomorrow. 1% better every day, baby. I'm getting my steps in today, baby. It is 7.40 p.m. right now. Push-ups, pull-ups, and dips. Let's do this. This is Luna's room right now, so she's gonna keep me company, or I'm gonna keep her company as I work out. <laughs> That's 21 minutes. Luna got scared by all the rattling, so she was hiding for the most part. She's so much smaller than Tigger. Like, less than half his weight, I think. Good morning, Luna. Good morning, Luna. More vocal self. Your, your vocal self. <laughs> Luna was meowing at 4 a.m. so I brought her, brought her to my bed. <laughs> Tiga. You big cat. <laughs> Tigger's curious about Luna. He comes to the stairs to <laughs> check Luna out. Although they haven't seen each other. Mm. 
Luna likes Mochi's bed? Well, I guess she's had enough. She wants something. She had food, so it isn't food. She probably wants to go OUT.